Alright, what's up YouTube, HPJ here, and I'm coming to you guys today with a deck profile for the Sky Strikers. It's been a long period of time since I've actually done a Sky Striker video, uh, primarily just because of the fact that the deck itself, um, physically, is not done. There's, it's very expensive, because the last three cards I need for the deck, um... Only one of the three has really gone down, and that happens to be Afterburner. So you won't see a physical version of this, unless the deck gets completely hit um, sometime soon. And I doubt it's going to go anytime soon, because this deck is still really good. Um, it still has a lot of its own faces, and it's still pretty much an optional deck that a lot of people are playing, because it still has a lot of carryover. Uh, despite the fact that a lot of other decks can easily trump it, I think one of the biggest adversaries this has is the Altergeist, which I believe are all the, all the spellcasters, and they pretty much are like a monster version, a combination of monsters and spells, similar to the Paleozoic, in the sense of they don't care if they have any spells, they just sit on Secret Village as a spellcaster and rely on most of their trap cards to do the job for them. So, with that said and done, let's just get through today's deck profile, shall we? For my monster lineup, I'm running three Sky Striker Ace Ray. I'm running two copies of Ash Blossom, two copies of Ghost Ogre, two copies of Jet Synchron, and two copies of Effect Veiler. For my spells, I'm running three copies of Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, three copies of Widow Anchor, two copies of of Afterburner, two copies of uh, Multi-Roll, two copies of Hercules Base, two copies of Jamming Wave, two copies of Area Zero, and one copy of Hornet Drone. For the rest of the spells, I'm running three copies of Foolish Burial of Goods, two copies of Twin Twister, one copy of uh, Metal Foes Fusion, one copy of Monster Reborn, one copy of Upstart Goblin, one copy of Reinforced Metal Army, one copy of One Day of Peace, one copy of Rageki, and one copy of Dark Hole. And that's pretty much it for the main deck. For the extra, I'm running three copies of Sky Striker Ace Suzuku, three copies of Sky Striker Ace Kigari, and three copies of Sky Striker Ace Hayate. For the rest of the extra deck monsters, I'm running one copy of Needle Fiber, one copy of Summoning Sorceress, one copy of Fi Firewall Dragon, one copy of Tubalogic Bomber Dragon, one copy of Evil Sworn Saiton Knight, and one copy of High Speed Roid Canabara. Just in case anyone's wondering where the rest of the extra hand stuff is, um, I have three copies of Reaper. Uh, Ghost Reaver and Ash Plot and Winter Cherries in the extra deck. With an extra copy of Ghost Ogre, an extra copy of Effect Veiler, um, a copy of Link Karibo, and an extra copy of some single one ofs in the forms of Sky Striker, a, of a Jamming Wave, um, Afterburner, uh, Eagle Boost, uh, Shark Cannon, another. Honing base, and of course, the solemn setup of brigade of a solemn in solemn judgment and solemn warning. So, um, was my whole basis of this deck when building is pretty much because Ray is technically the only big monster you want on your field, everything else is a hand trap, and everything else is pretty much there to be utilized as a hand trap, except for the jet synchron. So, the jet synchron is something that I started playing around with when I was playing around with the um, version here on YGL Pro. And it's safe to say it's a really good idea. It's a really good tactic of uh, pretty much going into a lot of your 1S, but you really have to utilize Needle Fiber and Summoner Sorceress to really get a full potential of this deck. Because in an in-off field, you're pretty much having a Tapologic Bomber out on the field next to a Hyper Speed Roid uh, Cannabar. And Cannabar is actually pretty good. It, every time it swings, it will gain 200 attack. So if you can swing at tokens, it this thing is a beast. If you can swing at monsters and you swing at your opponent's life points directly, it's going to gain more attack. So you're doing more damage. 
Um, with the rest of the deck itself, it's just pretty much set up for searching for your spells and traps. Make sure you either have Ray on board or get a Hornet drone to get a token onto the board. And utilize the summonings of Hayate, Kigari, and Suzuki. We do have the other new um, Sky Striker cards. I just haven't tested them really. I know we have... Um, the Earth Attribute, Sky Striker Ace, we have um, the Quick Play spell. So I will be looking at those in a future video. Um, just right now, I wanted to focus on, you know, having Sky Striker, just focusing on what we have now, especially considering the new band list did come out and hit Hornet Drone. Um, this was one of the key pieces. I think it's more so the fact now that um, the only real issue this deck has, besides monsters can swarm in the field and then take it out, is dealing with, um, finding a way to deal with Ultra guys because you really need your spells, and you, like, even if they're in the graveyard, you have them there, you still need activation for a lot of stuff here to really thin out your deck so you can go into a lot of your power plays. Um, although it does fill up for Suzuku to deal with a lot of issues, she can technically easily be took out if something can find a way to get strong enough to take her out. So you want to make sure you have a lot of backup in the forms of not only Kigiri, but you have um, a lot of your other Exceed monsters to really help out. But for the Sashakers itself, you really have to rely on a lot of your spells going to Graveyard. Now, in terms of that, your hand trap lineup is pretty much simplistic to um, just dummy whatever you can to the Graveyard to help in those certain situations. Um, I pretty much chose Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, Ghost Reaper, and Effect Veiler just because they're more prominent. If we had Maxi, yeah, he'd probably be in here at a, as a one-off. Um, but for the most part, this deck just pretty much focuses on summoning Ray, Link summoning, using the little ones to go into the big ones, and then just taking advantage of what cards you have so that way you can go into other pieces and then just pretty much swinging, swinging at your opponent with one shot. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Like, I didn't really have anything big to really go over. Um, just a lot of the pieces, I think, are pretty simplistic. You have your draw power from Kick from engage you have your control with widow anchor this is someone like a effect veiler which you can really do it more so on your opponent's turn and really mess up their play um you have a double shot of getting rid of monsters and spells with a combination of both afterburner and jamming wave just note jamming wave has to destroy set cards so if your opponent flips the card it's kind of not really gonna it's not gonna resolve um with same similar as to uh, Afterburner. If your opponent flips the monster face down, it will miss the target. So you got to be careful about those things. Um, Twin Twister is here as an additional way to help in case you can't get to Jamming Wave. Twin Twister takes out spells and traps for you by discarding a, a card from your hand. So most likely you want to discard a spell. Now, I have come into solution that it's a lot of cards will be really good in combination with Melfo's Fusion. Um, because Melfo's Fusion is really just in this deck to be an additional spell, be additional draw power. Um, you have cards like Foolish Burial of Goods, you have um, Mobilize, you have um, Multi-Roll, you have um, Area Zero to help you get rid of it. Uh, while it's on the, if you set it on the field. And then Twin Twister can either help you dump it to the graveyard from your hand, or you blow it up in addition to one of your opponent's spells and traps that you want to blow up. So it helps out um, in a lot of cases there. But yeah, Twin Twister is a great add-in. Melfos Fusion is a great draw out. Um, Phyllis Burial of Goods, if it's not dumping the Melfos Fusion, uh, you can easily just dump one of your other spells and then Kigiri can pick it up with her effect. So... And then you have all these one of that are pretty much just power spells to really help the deck thin itself out or deal with a lot of problems. Thankfully enough, Regeki and Dark Hole are still beneficial in a lot of senses because I have had to do with fields that I did not or I could not get over because I didn't have any. Uh, I couldn't get to my Afterburners, I couldn't get to my Jamming Waves, and my opponent didn't have much back row. So Regeki, Dark Hole 
help with that situation. Monster Reborn, just like I said, one of staples without attached to them. And I just give in with the additional draw power of the Upside Goblin in the one day piece. So that is pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think of my variation of Sky Striker Aces. Um, no, I'm not going to do a physical version because till I can get a hand of cheaper prices of these two cards, yeah, it ain't going to happen. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'll be working on another variation to include the new Sky Striker cards. I'll probably have that up sooner or later. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. ACJ, signing out. Take care.